All right, guys, what's up? We've got a little haul here today, all right? Um, went out to get tires, stuffed at a few places, down the thrift shop that I knew about, and just all on a whim went down there. And then I did kind of stop at uh, one antique shop because I traded a bunch of toys to a guy about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and I made a video about you know the signed comics I got from him. I knew that was his little lot when I started thinking about it in this antique shop that I've seen off and on for years. And I go in there and lo and behold, there's the Planet of the Egg toys, man. And he's got them like up there for $20 a pop and not a one sold. But anyway, moving on. All right, what I found in that shop, first of all, was this for five dollars with one magic word shazam this will definitely get framed watch the show as a kid and it was back to back with a show called isis and this was a time where the chick that played isis oh i knew her name i knew her name her and she and linda carter really kind of messed up my little five six year old mind i was just like they're, they're pretty you know what to do with them but uh, a lot of these I've heard, you know, you want, if you find one, you better grab it because actually back in the day, they, uh, you know, encouraged you to cut on your books to make these little dioramas and, and whatever this is, uh, cut out the white areas, you know, stuff like that. And this one is in really good shape, more or less. It's got an old $1.50 uh, price tag on it, which is all right. And but the inside is phenomenal, man. And some of the stuff they had in here, uh, I'm pretty sure these are all reprints. But you know, you could have your art lessons, how to draw the Marvel family. Um, let's see what else did we have? I think we had puzzles. You know, and I found this thing before, but somebody had done the puzzles, or people had drawn in it, or they had cut out the back. And you didn't know until you unbagged it. So I always thought that was cool. But there, this one had a cool pinup that I always liked. Yeah complete your cut out your cards the comics cards you know, just like those old Marvel stickers but uh oh where is it this one had a very cool pinup in it and I'm going to find it yeah I always got a kick out of that now that is an image I remember from when I was a kid right there and when did this come out 1975 so you know that thing was floating around what for me well after you know I was like you know, two when that came out and then the thrift shop in a place called Hillsville Virginia um, I was heading home I went out to get tires and I know this place where you know you can get cheap tires that are actually pretty solid you know so you know and uh, I was like I wonder what they got in there and I found boxes for 35 cents so I just looked at the lady and I was like why don't you just charge me for 20 bucks she said okay I got more than 20 these were all 35 cents a lot of them were beat up and man, the boxes they had, there's like five boxes in there, 35 cents a piece. And some of the Silver Age bronze stuff age that they had in there, if it had just survived the years or just had been taken care of, it would have just been so sweet. I left a lot of stuff behind because it was just disintegrating. Tales to Astonish, Doctor Strange. Oh, uh, oh, it was just, I was just sort of like, uh, okay, let's, let's find some good stuff. So what we have here is, uh, oh wait, I also bought something else off of eBay and I really hope I can find it here. This cover maybe remind me of it. Give me one second here. <laughs> On eBay, Fred Hembeck has a uh, eBay page and he does these little uh, one-of-a-kind you know hand-drawn mark with you know penciled markers uh, cards of all kinds of uh, comic book characters and cartoon characters and stuff and I saw this and I had to get it Space Ghost by Fred Hembeck one-of-a-kind not a print original drawing signed by him and it was awesome, you know, so he even commented on my uh, Facebook page when I was like, you know, world famous cartoonist Fred Hembeck. And this is what reminded me of it, okay, is DC Sampler number three with a wraparound Fred Hembeck cover. A uh, book's coming out, I think, this had to have been around maybe 83 or something. So it looks like it's in a comic book shop. So great stuff and uh, like they announced who's who in this this was just a book that was announcing books that were coming in so this is probably around 84 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, 1984. You know, but you got samples. And what I like about this, and I've always wanted this one, is that this lets you know that uh, Alan Moore on Swamp Thing was coming. I haven't read it, but that's what I'd always heard. You know, so this is letting you know that something different was coming. Saga of the Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. They knew they had something good coming, and Alan Moore had that book planned. You know, that covers probably like the first, I don't know, it looks like two, three, four, six issues, first six issues or something of his run. Yeah, so good stuff. I was really glad to find that. Found DC Sampler number two of, uh, you know, stuff that's coming out, announcing these books. The uh, Blue Devil, the Batman the Outsiders. This was like a bunch of stuff, the Atari Force. This was like a bunch of stuff that when the Baxter series were starting, you know, in Teen Titans. And then I found a second print, bone number nine, which I'm fine with. Second print's cool, okay? They had a bunch of third and fourth prints of the earlier issues, and I've been finding a lot of first prints, so I've been very happy about that. Uh, and then the other thing is, is I found some of these, I found a what the, I don't think these are in order, I should have done it. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wanting to complete this series. Uh, here's number 17. These were actually pretty freaking funny. And I uh, always enjoy the uh, fake uh, comic book ads they put in there. Like back in the old days when you get your x-ray glasses. Uh, I'm filling a gap. I have She-Hulk like 1 through 8 of the 1990 slash 91 series. Where John Byrne came on, did the first couple issues. Steve Gerber came on and brought in Howard the Duck and everything like that, but the artist who followed John Byrne was awful, so I didn't get him. Well, this is Steve Gerber and Brian Hitch. Here's number 20. And Byrne came back around issue 31, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get, like, issue 9 through 31 as I run across them. I mean, 35 cents. And this one's in beautiful shape. If only all the books would have been in beautiful shape. Oh, yeah, here we go. Some more Watha, number 11, with Wolverina. John Byrne covers. I think he did the first year of covers and stuff on there. Uh, number nine with a big uh, John Byrne cover. All right, this hilarious stuff. Byrne's big return to Marvel after you know sabbatical at uh, you know DC just rebooting Superman. All right, then I can't believe I got these because like this was like the demise of Marvel in my eyes. This is when Casada came on and. They did Avengers Disassemble. Uh, we're going back to 2005. Was it really? That seems like it was longer than that. Yeah, these are not in order, guys. So. But this was like uh, the demise of uh, Marvel, in my opinion. You know, starting with Avengers Disassemble. And this was like a, a special finale issue that came out. And they had uh, Neil Gaiman. He did the uh, cover. So I figured I'd grab it. You know, so moving right along. Um, got an early issue of Wolverine from his first actual ongoing series, uh, number six. But I got it because on the back, back then, when you got these, um, oh man, higher quality covers uh, on the comics, uh, thicker grade of paper, shinier and stuff like that, they didn't waste anything. They turned around and you got galleries. So here's a uh, Wolverine pinup by Todd McFarlane from back in the day. Oh yeah, and another Avengers Disassembled. I didn't get all the parts of this Avengers Disassembled, but I got number four. I had them, and I sold them. I couldn't stand what they were doing. Everybody was out of character. This is where they killed Hawkeye, and the scrolls were appearing, and Doctor Strange came up, and it had this weird, surreal feeling. But, uh, spoiler alert, everybody should know, the, it turns out that it was uh, the Scarlet Witch that was the bad guy, and I love this collage of all her, you know, of all the appearances where... They're trying to justify Wanda being the bad guy, being mentally unstable for years and years and years. Going back to her Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, her West Coast Avengers, where they reformed with John Byrne, uh, George Perez panels. I mean, they went back and actually pulled from the books, you know, so, you know. I thought that was always kind of cool. And that's the nice little collage. I got this, okay? This is Nightmaster. And I need to do a video because I'm doing this off the hit. This is a pre you know, DC preview showcase. Yes, it's been written on and it's beat up, but like I said, it's 35 cents. But this is a character named Nightmaster who <laughs> ended up the creator of him. I'm not going to say who it is it's off the top of my head. I don't want to be wrong, but the Nightmaster. He ended up becoming Devil Slayer over in Marvel and popped up in the Defenders books. And then he actually ended up becoming another character at another independent company. All right, it's all off the top of my head. I wish I'd done a little research, but it's great Joe Kubert cover. Uh, 1969. 
Denny O'Neill, Bernie Wrightston. Bernie Wrightston did the art in this. Early Bernie Wrightston. So yeah, I'm going to grab this. Um, this is number 84. So, but I think right, I hope I've told you right, you know, Nightmaster, Devil Slayer, and there's another character. I need to look all that up. But yeah, they're basically the same character, just, uh, you know. Then I grab this. This is PC Comics, Jeffrey Jones, Ravens, and Rainbows. Uh, these PC books were, they put the creator's name on there and stuff. This is where they just kind of have got in there and explored their artwork, man. You see, in my opinion, as interpreting the artwork and stuff, these little Bernie Rice and Sue, or, you know, whatever they came out with back in the day, just very, very honest um, stuff. Here's a Jeff, Jeff Jones story from 1970 being reprinted in here. And uh, big panels. Just use, awesome use of blacks. Um, the dynamics of space making the, you know such a black void interesting with a figure in there uh, telling the whole story while they're going on it's got nudity so I'm going to leave it at that you know I'm, nothing like opening a comic having kind of a big nipple in your face uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and if I run across these I'm going to get all the Dread Star issues here's number 6 where it was coming towards uh, in 60 where it was coming towards the end with Peter David Art I think it was Angel yeah Angel Medina Angel Medina is an artist who I always thought he never really got his due. Uh, the early, you know, the easiest stuff to find is that he did a Soviet Super Soldiers one shot for Marvel, and then he was the first artist on Warlock and Infinity Watch. I mean, check his stuff out. I about fell down. Uh, this is my third copy of this. Mike Plug Man Thing, Man Thing number nine. Mike Plug, and uh, Mike Plug always knew the draw with him you know had to do with like when I look at his stuff I think that's what comic book art should be turns out it's in highly influenced by Will Eisner and I think Mike Plug and I can't believe I forgot this I read this back in the 80s so I hope I'm right but Mike Plug actually interned under Will Eisner I think Mike Plug started emulating uh, Will Eisner's art before he even knew who Will Eisner was I told you I was getting the uh, movie comics going movie adaptions so I got number two. I have number one upstairs. I have number two of Conan the Barbarian movie special. And I'm hoping it was just two parts. Let's take a look now, shall we? Yep, finished. So I have both parts. All right. Well, never seen this. I've only seen Sinbad in the official Marvel Index, you know, they had back in the 80s. Golden Voyage of Sinbad by Worlds Unknown. I think this is Bill Mantlo, Steve Buscemi. Oh, no, I could not be more off. Lynn Wine and George Tuska with Vince Collada. 1974, Worlds Unknown. I think I went Sal Bashima because it's got that edgy uh, artwork that he ended up doing in the 90s is what I thought. So, Yep, got me. All right. So then I was really happy to find this. Amazing Adventures number 20. This is a very fine copy. Flat, shiny. Um, this is from 1973. Pages are still creamy. So I'm guessing that this thing was in the middle of a stack of comics or something. And was protected. Uh, I mean, look at this. I love the old ads in here. Some Bernie Wrightston, uh, Conan, and, you know, Savage Tales coming on. So that should be good. I was really happy to find this because I was always kind of curious to see this. I've never seen this. But it's the origin of the Tattered Damalion, the Ragman, number one. That's probably got to be from 76. Yeah, and it's got some staining. You know, like I said, these books were just in shape. They had all kinds of stuff like this. Yeah, 76 is a bi-monthly book. Yeah, but number one, The Rag Man. And then I just got these for the hell of it. And this one looks like a Pat Broderick. Yeah, Pat Broderick and Terry Austin. But I found some uh, waterlogged <laughs> Battlestar Galactica books, number nine. And I have a couple upstairs of some scattered issues. Number 18. And then I had to grab this, man. This is some early George Perez from 1976. And I know there's fans out there, but uh, Logan's Run, number four. Now, if I had known George Perez had done the art on this, I would have been scarfing them up. And then I got some borderline, uh, eh, this is reprints, man, but I got the Ringo Kid, number 30. These are reprints. But uh, every now and then, you ought to grab them because, you know, Jim Starlin did some covers here or there. And this isn't one of them. This is Herb Crempe. But, uh, you know, I forgot to grab it to be safe and sorry. And then Raw High Kid, number 138. Stan Lee, Archie Goodwin, and uh, Werner Roth, who I used to know who this is. But this is from 1970. 
out. And here we go. And then I got, I don't think Clue did this one, did he? Nope. But Steve Gerber did the writers. This is from 1973. Got a uh, Man Thing number two from the first series. You know, chasing some hippies out. All right, guys. That was my haul. I'm going to eat my Subway. I'm going to watch some online TV. And carry them.